Reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. to everybody. Welcome to Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Network's television. And of course, Love Never Dies Radio is on the Dream Vision 7 radio network. And I want to ask you, are you ready to flaunt and find and trust your truth no matter what happens to you, even when life cuts you off at the knees, whether it's the loss of a loved one, a diagnosis, a world crisis, abuse, infidelity, a sudden financial shift, divorce, empty nesting, or even menopause. There are times in all of our lives when we are cut off at the knees or without mooring. And my guest today teaches you how to rely on and express yourself fully as you are, not as you think you should be. And it's time like these that you need to flaunt what my guest calls her five steps of flaunt. Laura Cheadle, she's a transformational thought leader who empowers women to express themselves fully, find uninhibited joy, and gracefully take the lead in the dance of life despite any external circumstances. She's the author of the best-selling book, Flaunt, Drop Your Cover, and Reveal Your Smart, Sexy, and Spiritual Self. It's available wherever books are sold. You can also listen to her podcast or find out more at lauracheadle.com, where you can download your free bundle of joy gift pack. So without further ado, welcome, Laura. Sorry we had that little glitch in the beginning. It's all good. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to be here. I am so, so thrilled to have you. And tell, tell me, because I always love to hear the backstory of how this mission came about for you. <laughs> it's a, kind of a fun backstory. I was actually a corporate attorney for 10 years. And as you can imagine, there's a certain stereotype around being a corporate attorney. You have to be serious. You have to be calm. You have to be all of these things, plain, brown, boring, you know? And that just wasn't me. And although I loved the mental aspects of being a lawyer, I loved fighting for justice. I loved helping my clients. It didn't fit my personality. And it was distressing to me because I would think, why can't I be this kind of a lawyer? Why can't I be a happy, bouncy, perky lawyer who connects with people and gets into it and dances and can go to court and argue? Why do I have to follow the stereotypical view of what a lawyer is like? So long and the short, about 10 years after, um, after 10 years of practicing law, I thought, you know what? I have to do this my way. I have to move back into who I am and start expressing myself fully. And I just had my second baby. And actually, I'm embarrassed to say, instead of stepping really fully into myself, I spiraled down and I lost myself even more. Because as a mom, there is so much pressure about what you should and shouldn't do and what your kids should and shouldn't do and your worth, you know, based on what they are or are not doing. And it took me quite a long time to shed all of those layers, all of those expectations and step fully into myself and my power for who I was, not who I thought I should be. Isn't that wonderful? And that is especially difficult for women because you know there's, it's still entrenched in the culture. Be a good girl, be a nice girl. Don't speak up, don't assert yourself. You know, women often begin their sentences with, I think blah, 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 like as if you have to, underscore you're thinking it. Well, if you're saying it, you think it. Men don't begin their sentences that way. Exactly. Exactly. And also, not only was it the girl thing, you know, be a good girl. Don't, don't make pe don't give people the wrong idea. There was also this overachiever part of me. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. And then I enjoyed that external validation. Ooh, I got an A on my paper. You know, ooh, I, I got the promotion. Ooh. And I was constantly seeking that validation outside of myself instead of going within and setting my own standards and then being like, yeah, 
you did that. It sounds like you come from a family of high achievers. So yeah. that so I could hear that resonating in what you were saying. And I relate to that because my dad, you know, Harvard and Princeton educated lawyer. Yeah. And he used to say to me, you can be perfect. Well, you want to talk about a formula to be crazy? Nobody can be perfect. So you're always a failure if you're always striving to be perfect. Absolutely. In my book, I talk about the corset of perfection. And really, my whole life was based on that corset of perfection. I can bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan and never let you forget you're a man. I can do it. And I can, and we all can, but at what cost? Did you get burned out like so many women get, you know, with like the adrenal fatigue, exhaustion, you got all that too, because you look so vibrant to me now. Oh, it's, thank you so you much. Imagine that you were that way. I did. I did have adrenal fatigue. It was not fun. What kept me going as long as I was able to keep going is the fact that I've always enjoyed fitness. I don't work out because I have to. I work out because I love to dance and I love to move. So even though I was killing myself in so many other ways, I was always doing yoga. I was always dancing. So that actually kept me going for much longer than I should have. Oh, that, but did you actually have... You know, normally human beings like to stay with the status quo. Even familiar pain is preferable to the unknown. We don't change unless we basically are on our knees. So did you literally have to crash in order? I, yes. I have gone through several mini crashes. But yes, when I suffered adrenal fatigue, they actually thought I was having a heart attack because I had such crushing chest pain and my heart rate was going all up and down and I was severely low on potassium. And it wasn't until that happened that it was like, oh, this is serious. I can't keep going like this. And other people will have to pick up the slack and they can do that. I can drop the ball, wow. Well, other people as in even your husband, other people? Yes, a husband and my kids. My kids were in high school when I had my adrenal fatigue. And it's not that I was doing everything for them, but I was still collecting the dishes, doing the laundry, taking care of things. And it was like, I don't have to get up at five in the morning to get you off to school. You're making your own breakfast anyway. I can sleep. But as the good mom, I would get up and I would talk to them while they would get ready. And I would hang out with them while they ate breakfast. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I was getting up at five in the morning to do that. And I was working until about one in the morning, taking care of my own things. And no, no human body can do that. No way. And how old were you when you were doing that? Oh, let me think. That was the, uh, my late forties. So about 47, 48. Wait a minute. You don't look like you're in your late forties now. And <laughs> so I, I'm trying, I'm trying to do the math here. How old are you now? I'm 51 now. Thank you for that. Oh, my Lord. You, 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 I thought you were like in your 30s or something. Oh, bless you. <laughs> and I didn't sneeze. <laughs> Down the truth. It, it is amazing. So you, you've been in this new place only for a few years, really. It has, you know, like with so many things, it's a process. I started... I started this process, this journey in about 2007, realizing things have to shift and I would shift certain things, but I wasn't letting go of the old. I was adding in some of my new ways of thinking. I was adding in mindfulness and yoga and I went back to school and became a certified hypnotherapist at that point. So I was adding things in, but I still wasn't letting go of a lot of the perfectionistic tendencies. And, you know, like so many things, it's a journey. And the further along that path that I went, the happier I got. And then it wasn't when I was 45, I started dancing burlesque. And that was another turning point. Because to do that, you really have to step into your power and be like, this is funny. Burlesque is a parody. 
and I love to dance and I love the theatrical elements of it. And you have to let go of the preconceived notions about what that is about. And that was another step that made me happier, that really allowed me to start flourishing and moving into my own joy. So you say that the, the flaunt, F-L-A-U-N-T, which is your method, came from your burlesque and that the flaunt is an acronym for the five steps, right? Absolutely, yes. So would you begin to flaunt your flaunt? <laughs> I would love to flaunt my flaunt. <laughs> flaunt is my five-step methodology for helping people find what I like to call is your naked self-worth. And I know you know all about this, but in order to truly connect with others, be happy, and find your power, we do have to get naked. We have to get emotionally vulnerable. And FLAUNT is the acronym. The F stands for find your fetish. And find your fetish means a couple of things. It means find your joy. First of all, kids play for the sake of playing. Kids don't play to get better. They don't play to impress somebody. But think about what we do in our life. We do things in order to accomplish something or prove something or impress someone. So finding your fetish is about tuning in to what makes you happy. And I also use the definition of fetish like Dumbo's feather. Dumbo believed he could fly because he had his feather. The power was within him all along but he needed that feather. And it's okay if we need that feather. It's okay if we need that little lift, that's fine, but we do have to find it. The L is for laugh out loud. The power of laughter is phenomenal. It can heal <laughs> diseases. It can make you feel better. It's a cathartic emotional release. It's contagious. It makes everybody in your world feel better. The third step is AU, accept unconditionally. And I call that the golden center of flaunt because that's where the magic happens. That is where you have to accept unconditionally who you are, what you can and cannot do, your positives, your negatives, your life situation, your age, your crow's feet, whatever it is, accept yourself unconditionally. And then, <laughs> this is hard too, accept others unconditionally so we can cut you know cut that that toxic way of well if i just do this he'll do that well if i give her that attention then she'll do this to me and if i do this we can't control other people accepting them unconditionally keeps us in our power because then we can rationally choose what we need to do next to take care of us n is navigate the negative and although I really don't believe things are positive or negative, they just are, we do have to navigate around all of the things that happen in our lives, in our bodies, in our world, in our relationships. And then that leads us to T, which is trust in your truth. Because unless we, first of all, know our truth, we can't firmly ground in ourselves, and then we're constantly rocked by people and the world and situations and all of those things in our life. So it's those five steps that bring you to that place of truth and bring you to that place of naked self-worth, which is your ability to value yourself for who you are in every single moment, no matter what is going on around you. Oh, that's wonderful. I love how articulate you are. I, you know, I was thinking as you were speaking, it's as if you have a script and you don't because I know you're speaking completely spontaneously from your soul, but it is so pure and true that the words flow so naturally. And that's how I know that flaunting the flaunt is your mission. And you really are an empowerer. And this is really work you're doing more for women or you're also helping men as well? I help men as well. Um, most women, I. Men and women flaunt differently. Men have stereotypes too. Men have to be strong. They have to be the provider. They have to be masculine. They have to step into that power. So men cover too, and men need to flaunt as well. However, for me and my experience, most women are attracted to me because we've got that sisterhood. We've got that kinship. We have been through the journey together. But that said, I have worked with men as well. 
Absolutely. And for a man to flaunt his vulnerable, emotional underbelly is an incredible warrior's journey. It yeah. takes the greatest strength of all. If I could take a second, because I realize that I have something time sensitive and I haven't shared it at all on the radio show. And I'd like to talk for one second, if I may, about my workshop this Saturday at 1440 Multiversity Online. It's the first time I'm doing this workshop and I'm, I felt called to do it online because the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered what I'm calling a global PTSD pandemic. And I'm sharing a scientifically backed but little known solution for PTSD that even your doctor doesn't know about yet. There's a lot of NIH published research proving that stress, I mean, we're talking about stress pushing the world stress, one accident, one illness, one stress, one sickness is enough to deplete our body's magnesium levels. And the same NIH research proves that low magnesium levels triggers HPA axis dysfunction, which is also uh, operative in adrenal fatigue, by the way, when you're pushing and you're in the fight flight mode, you're in HPA axis dysfunction, and that this chemical imbalance that's triggered by magnesium deficiency is the cause of PTSD. And the great news is that magnesium reverses PTSD. It reverses PTSD. All the therapies that people are trying are only moderately effective if you don't supplement with magnesium. But the catch is that oral magnesium is not well absorbed. And that is why I have been propounding, I've been talking about electrotransdermal magnesium because it goes right into the bloodstream and begins reversing PTSD. I don't sell it. I'm not a distributor. But in the last year, I've been using this electromagnesium in my energetic system upgrade workshops and the healings have been amazing. The magnesium activates all the circuits of your brain, your heart, and your organs. These are all electromagnetic circuits that get fired by the magnesium. And it allows you to then let me uncover and assist you in uprooting whatever physical, emotional, or spiritual imbalance, wound, trauma, or unfinished business you're carrying. So this Saturday, May 9th, is the workshop, and I have offered to supply the magnesium to the first 25 people who registered. I'm afraid it's probably too late now for you to have it shipped to your door in time, but you could still apply for a scholarship because 1440 is accepting some scholarships on a first come first serve basis. You can find uh, this uh, information and the registration at 1440.tv. And um, if you want to find out more about the energetic system upgrade, you can come to askdrlove.com and the energetic system upgrade is right there on the first banner on the home page. I write a, a magazine column every month called Winning the War on PTSD in Masters of Health Mag. You can also get this magnesium at amazon.com slash electra with a K, E-L-E-K-T-R-A, electromagnesium. So that's my little, little, um, little pitch about this because I want everybody who's suffering right now to have an opportunity to reverse your PTSD. We're going to take a break. And when I come back, we're going to get more into how to flaunt who you really are. Be back with you in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love. It's Dr. Jamie Turndorf here, and I have a question for you. Are you or someone you love a veteran suffering from undiagnosed PTSD? According to statistics, between 100 and 200,000 vets suffer PTSD. But did you know that there's an arbitrary diagnostic loophole that denies the PTSD diagnosis to vets who suffer a coexisting mental health disorder? Meanwhile, according to the British Psychiatric Journal, it is rare for vets to suffer PTSD without a coexisting mental health disorder. This means that millions of vets with PTSD don't even know they have it and aren't getting treatment for it. 
Read my new column, Winning the War on PTSD, in mastersofhealthmag.com and discover a cutting-edge, research-backed new solution to PTSD that you've never heard about. The exciting news is this solution is free for vets with PTSD. Go to mastersofhealthmag.com, take my free PTSD quiz right away, and start your healing journey today. Wishing you all the love in this world and beyond. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello again, and welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf Turn On the Love television show on Binge Networks TV. I'm talking with the wonderful Laura Cheadle, transformational thought leader and a woman who empowers women to express themselves fully, find uninhibited joy, and gracefully take the lead in the dance of life despite any external circumstances. She's the author of the best-selling Flaunt, Drop Your Cover and Reveal Your Smart, Sexy, and Spiritual Self, available wherever books are sold. You can listen to her podcast or find out more at laurachetel.com, and there you can download load your free bundle of joy gift pack. So we're back, and I'm just, I'm just enjoying you so much. I wanted to talk a little bit about what the resistances are, because, you know, there's a part of us that always wants to be who we are. And then there's the other part that would prefer to not flaunt, not expose, not make waves. So what's your understanding of the internal resistances in the women who you work largely with? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is such a great question because there is so much resistance. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's something small, like I'm going to lose three pounds or if it's something huge, like I need to leave my spouse. There is so much resistance. Fear, you know, the bottom line is fear of change. We are so comfortable with what is and it's difficult to change. And as women, especially, we are cognizant of that we are the center of the universe for our kids, for our families, for our friends. Even at work, oftentimes, things revolve around us. And we're aware of that. And it's, it's kind of a dichotomy because the more powerful and aware that we are, that we hold things together for people, the more locked into that space we become. Because we realize we will change the people around us. Because if we change, it forces everybody else to adapt. And we don't want people to fall away. We just want things to get better. And as it is with any cycle, sometimes when we're changing, things do get a little bit messier before they get better. Things fall apart a little bit in order to come back together in a more cohesive, beautiful way. And we're afraid of that. And also, a secondary, a whole secondary reason is women haven't really been groomed to understand their power. Historically speaking, we have been property, 
We have been second class citizens. We have been the power behind the throne. We do not have a long history of historical figures or people in our own families that we can say, oh, I can do it like she did it. I see that, I understand it, and I'm going to apply it to myself. Our greatest sources of power are male sources. And it's difficult for us to stand in our feminine nature and to look at the way a man did it and then to apply it to ourselves. So some of the things that we're doing when we're sparkling and we're shining and we're flaunting is we're experimenting and we're figuring it out. And we don't want to do it wrong. But when you're learning, you're going to make some missteps. We just don't want to do that because we don't want to disrupt everybody and we don't know how to do it. And that's where that resistance comes in because we think, oh, I don't know. And this is too big of a job and I don't want to hurt other people. That's right. You know, and I, I also think along the lines of what you're saying, there is, a, there is a sense of, kind of reminds me of the empty nest. I've been a mother and a wife. Who am I without this external package, this false self? Uh, <clears throat> who am I? Who am I on the inside? And I'm afraid to look in and find there's nothing there. People really think this, right? Mm -hmm. That I give up my job as a mother or a wife or a people pleaser or a yes woman, what's left? So there is that fear of anomie to just be a stranger to myself and find there's nothing, don't you think? Yes. And on the flip side of that, there's also that fear that I'm too much. I'm too big. I'm too bold. I'm too different. I'm so weird. I can't expose this. Nobody will ever accept me and I'll be alone for the rest of my life. Oh, that is so right. You know, it's so funny. My mother said to me when my husband left his body from the bee sting and she was, uh, talking to me just a couple weeks later she said jamie if you ever hope to marry again don't speak to the man i said well she said you're very powerful you will threaten any man so just don't speak i said well should i speak on like what like on the deathbed of the man i mean at what point can i begin to speak and flaunt who i am right yes. that's the traditional belief that if you are in your power you will threaten a man Mm hmm Absolutely. And I talk about all facets of who we are quite a lot. And in my book, the title is Drop Your Cover and Reveal Your Smart, Sexy, and Spiritual Self. We are more than just one thing. It's not that you're a smart and powerful woman, or you're a meek and maternal woman, or you're a spiritual woo-woo woman. You're, you can be all of that. You can be anything that you want to be. It's just that we don't, we have these stereotypes of you know, the power hungry woman with a chip on her shoulder. The, you know, we have the stereotypes. We're not a stereotype. We're three dimensional. <laughs> we can be all of that. And until we start flaunting who we are, we just perpetuate the belief that a woman can only be one thing. That's right. That's right. And the more spiritually evolved you are, male or female, the more you hold both male and female stereotypic gender role traits equally within yourself so that you can be both tender and assertive you, you you're everything all at the same time yes absolutely absolutely and like that when we flaunt we give others permission to do the same that's and, so true yeah you know we talk about diversity and inclusion and how important that is not only in the workplace but just in the world but it's such surface level diversity oh yeah we're gonna have diversity but you all have to act the same way Oh, that's such a good point. And you know, the thing is, it's like when you're raising a child, it's not what you tell them to do, it's what you demonstrate. Don't do as I do, do as I say. No, people model after what they see. And you know, it's funny because uh, I, one of my transdimensional grief resolution method coaches is a very meek uh, Asian woman. And you can always tell where you need to tweak yourself by how your kids mimic you right? You know what you need to improve or be, when you're watching your kids and they are modeling after you. So one day we, we, all my coaches went out to dinner and the waitress was not nice, right? And I called her a B-I, you know the word. Uh -huh. so my little Japanese coach, she was so adorable. She mimicked me. She went like this. <laughs> and when 
<laughs> she mimicked me. I said, oh my God, that's probably how I look when I turn my head and I say the word. It was so funny. That's hilarious. But yeah. yeah. Really. And I noticed also my coaches use the F-bomb a lot, which I do because, you know, I took to doing that very early on to help my patients feel free to communicate their angry feelings. And so the F-bomb really kind of greases the runway. So. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can't take your clients, your patients, your coaches, your mentees, you can't take them beyond where you've grown yourself. And then uh, when it's really authentic, then you will know because they will naturally assimilate whatever that piece is that you've integrated. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because we were socialized in this world. So we, you know, look around us all the time, we gauge our behavior and we act according to how the people around us act. So when people are free and open and honest and fully expressing, we can be the same. And when people are uptight and repressed, we act the same. Absolutely. You know what, what's so cool about you, and I can feel that this is truly your energy. You are bubbly and buoyant. It's who you are. Yes. You have such an enthusiasm for life. And I cannot even imagine you in the courtroom arguing a case with this bubbly, fun energy. You know, it would be hard to be taken seriously. So then you would have to put on this veneer. Yes. Yes. I have my judge story in my book. When I was in the student law office, I was, what, 22, 23 years old, and I won my very first case. And I put on my navy blue conservative business suit, you know, that hit below the knees. And I had my long permy hair at the time, but I, you know, breaded it back. And I, conservative makeup, conservative, all of that stuff. And I won this case against an old established male attorney. And I was so proud and I had really connected with my clients and we were, I, we were just so enthusiastic. And when the judge ruled in my favor, they gave me a hug and the judge pointed his gavel at me and he said, I want to see you in my courtroom now. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm thinking he's going to say, you know, you're a rising legal star. This guy's been doing, you know, repossessions for 30 years. That's what you would think, right? right? Right. Yeah. And good job. Oh, no, 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 no. He looks me up and down and he's like, I don't like the way you interacted with your clients. You were all smiles with them. Well, hello. We just won. I just won the case. They have been my client for a while. We've gotten to know each other. I'm into the relational aspects of things. Hello. Yeah, hello. And then he said, if you want to be taken seriously, you need to wear pants instead of a skirt because your legs are really oh. nice. No, no, no. He meant you have to wear a penis is what he meant. You exactly. got to strap it on. Yes, exactly. To act like the stereotypic, affectless male. Yes. Did, uh, uh, what did you feel when he chewed you out like that? Uh, in the moment, I felt a lot of shame. I felt a lot of embarrassment for who I was. It's inevitable, isn't it? Yes. You know, when somebody who's an authority figure chews you out, you know, it reminds me, I never told anybody this publicly. I was always a great writer, just from the time I was a kid. And in my master's program, I wrote a paper. And it was the week of graduation from my master's. And I was in my field placement in a psychiatric clinic when a phone call comes in from the professor of the university calling my supervisor at the clinic to say I plagiarized the paper. I was taken down to the university and grilled because she said there's no way anyone as young as you could write this well. That, and I said to her, but I just published a book with my husband. You know, obviously I have a gift. She said, I know you plagiarized this. I know you did. I can't prove it. It was such a horrible, but that was an example of me using my voice, right? Yes. In the written page. And no, it can't be true. And, and as Voltaire said, when you lie about someone, the lie always remains. So everyone at the clinic heard the accusation. So forever you're branded a plagiarist. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is so unfair. 
But we suffer these kinds of unfairnesses all the time because you're not fitting the stereotype of what I think a master's level student should be or a woman student or, right? Anything. Yes. It's, and it makes me furious, actually. It's not something I want to accept, you know? No, no, exactly. And same thing. I've had people tell me, well, you can't do all of that. You can't be good at all three of those things. You oh, yeah? Well, watch me. I am. And, and I don't care if I'm gifted or if I worked for it. It still is me. And the more I cover and hide and say, oh, it's fine. Oh, it's good the worse it is. And I really believe the more we all step into our own power and are able to say, yes, I am gifted. Yes, I am powerful. We have to take a break now, but I want to speak about power because there's something important that just popped into my head regarding power. We're going to talk about this. We'll be back in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turndorf, Turn On The Love. It's Dr. Jamie Turndorf here, and I have a question for you. Are you or someone you love a veteran suffering from undiagnosed PTSD? According to statistics, between 100 and 200,000 vets suffer PTSD. But did you know that there's an arbitrary diagnostic loophole that denies the PTSD diagnosis to vets who suffer a coexisting mental health disorder? Meanwhile, according to the British Psychiatric Journal, it is rare for vets to suffer PTSD without a coexisting mental health disorder. This means that millions of vets with PTSD don't even know they have it and aren't getting treatment for it. Read my new column, Winning the War on PTSD, in mastersofhealthmag.com and discover a cutting-edge, research-backed new solution to PTSD that you've never heard about. The exciting news is this solution is free for vets with PTSD. Go to mastersofhealthmag.com, take my free PTSD quiz right away, and start your healing journey today. Wishing you all the love in this world and beyond. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love. So I'm talking with my near and dear sister, Laura Cheadle, about how you can flaunt, find your true authentic self and voice. And we were, we were, before the break, I said, I want to talk about power, you know, and I was just thinking, we, we often think of power as a four letter word that it's used to crush another, you know, the traditional male gender role interpretation of power is I'm going to dominate you. I'm going to, you know, 
be on top of you. But the power you're talking about is a very different kind of power. Yes, it is. In fact, the power that I'm talking about really goes into identifying, knowing, and offering up your weaknesses. Because when we are very in tune with what those weaknesses are and what our soft points are, and we offer them up, nobody can crush them with them again, because we're not afraid of being found out. We're not afraid of having some image of us being torn down. When I was practicing law, they talk about inoculating the jury. And what that means is if you're going to put a witness on the stand and the witness has some sort of unsavory aspect to his or her character, you're better off just saying, wow, this witness, you know, had two DUIs in the past. He had a problem with alcohol and now it's over. And then the jury goes, oh, wow, I can relate to that. Poor guy. Nice journey. And then you're not shocked when opposing counsel says, aha, and he had a DUI. Great example. Yeah. It's like a preemptive strike. You can't cut me off at the knees. I'm already on my knees. Absolutely. Exactly. And it's doing it with love and honesty because we all have our vulnerabilities and it's okay. We're supposed to. True. It's so, so true. You know, when I wrote Love Never Dies, the first part is my memoir. And it was frightening to me because, you know, I'm like the old school mainstream shrink. You're a blank screen. You don't reveal anything. And there I went out and talked about everything, flaws and all. And I, it was terrifying for me to do. And the way I was able to get past it was to say to myself, number one, I'm endorsing myself. I don't care what anybody else thinks or says. I have to be my own endorser. When you shift the, the locus of control off of others and back onto yourself, so you're not like a beggar with a cup, please appreciate me, please validate me, please prop up my self-esteem. Once you take the power back into your own hands and endorse yourself, you are really in a true state of power. And then also I had to think, I, uh, it's more important that I share it because it will help other people. Yes. Right? So, right? You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I absolutely do. Because we all have difficulties in our life. And I love that you talk so much about PTSD and work with PTSD and talk about, you know, this global PTSD that's happening. We are all in a state of trauma. (laughs) All of us. it, it, It used to be that we thought 2.2, you know, I started this because I fell in love with a New York State trooper who had PTSD. And I did not, you know, I wasn't able to help him. He was, he didn't want to be helped. And it was such a heartbreaking thing that all I could think to do was turn the mission over to help other vets with PTSD if I can't help him. And as I deepened my research, I found out, oh, it's not just first responders and veterans that have PTSD. Now I realize we all do, more or less, all of us. Yes. And when we normalize it, yeah, yeah. If we normalize it, we can talk about it. And that's another reason that I use burlesque and the concept of burlesque in my work. Burlesque is, for people who don't know, it's all, it's, it's a parody. It's ironic. It pokes fun of taboo. And one of the things that's very taboo in our society is to have a body that is not a size six perfect Barbie doll body, you know, you, you can't have a body that's overweight or underweight or too muscular or not muscular enough. And burlesque exposes parts of the body. There's never full nudity in burlesque, but it exposes real bodies of all ages, of all sizes, of all conditions. There are burlesque performers who have had mastectomies and they reveal that. Oh yes, there are performers that have severe scoliosis. There are performers that have all sorts of things and it's reveling in the fact that we're all bodies. And if you look throughout history, we cared for our elders. We gave birth and we helped each other. We saw wounds because we didn't have medical care. We were so much more connected to the true condition of the human body in past generations than we are now because now everything is sanitized and sterilized and Photoshopped. And burlesque gives us the opportunity to be like, look, 
I've had two kids and I have stretch marks and I have fat and my figure is pretty much straight up and down and look at me, I can still move and enjoy it and have fun with it. And look, I have crow's feet too. And it's great. And I can I still. I did not know this about burlesque. And you know, everything is, there are no accidents and no coincidence because what movie did I watch last night? The Hugh Jackman film, right? Which, did you know, The Greatest Showman? Yes. So, but he's doing, he, he was the first to show people with what we considered flaws, the bearded lady, the tall man, the, the dwarf. Uh, so it sounds like that was the beginning of the burlesque movie. Yes. Yes. When you look back at some of the roots of burlesque, and there's many different burlesque traditions, but a lot of the roots of burlesque were... We had the upper crust societies who would go to the opera and the theater. And then there was the common man who couldn't afford that and didn't understand it anyway. So you had the vaudeville shows, you had the strip tease, you had the, you know, the comic. That's the root, that's where burlesque really developed and took root because it was making fun of the fact that in, say, Victorian society, you couldn't show the neck, you couldn't show the ankles. Oh, that's or, yeah, and are you kidding me? If you are lower class, you have to show the neck and show the ankles because you're working in your own field. What's wrong with a neck or an ankle anyway? Do you realize that I think this was your calling from the time you came into this bodily incarnation and that part of the story was that you came from such a driving force family so that you would be able to say, this is a straight jacket for me. I've got to break out and bring this mission to the world, to the women who are not flaunting who they really are. It's your calling. I agree. I agree because I'm so passionate about it and I've lived it and I understand yes. how it feels. Now, how does your family respond to this new mission? Because I mean, if you became a lawyer, obviously they wanted you to be a professional. So how are they responding to this new? I, I will answer that by saying they, uh, first, I was terrified what a lot of people would say. I would, I could just hear my dad's voice in my head, you know, saying, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you doing this? And it was surprising because I hid it from people for a while. And then when I kind of came out of the closet, I got support. People would say, that totally fits you. That makes sense. Wow. Yeah. So it was. The thing is, you think people will judge you. But when you're coming from your authentic truth and people feel it, you are always appreciated, I find. I really, or at least if there are people who truly love you and care for you. Yes, you're right on. Because it's not like I'm going to go be this weird exhibitionist and have a midlife crisis. It's, it's not that oh, at all. You're not gonna? Oh. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. It's, it's your truth and people who know who you are. And like you said, I am perky. I am bouncy. I've danced my whole life. It makes perfect sense. Absolutely. And it's the other thing I get about you that's very special. You know how women are socialized to be very competitive with other women and jealous. You know, I had a guest come on the show. She took one look at me and I saw her start with, oh, wait a minute. I better, you know, it was like she was doing this comparing and competitive thing. Now she had to do something with her looks, her makeup, because I was just so gorgeous that day. You know, whatever it was that she felt threatened or whatever it was. And you are not like that. You are just, I feel how much you uplift me, you know, and support me and whatever I'm doing because you make enough room. You're confident enough to make room for you and the other person you're in interaction with. Yeah. Thank I, you for that. Thank I see that, that about you. Yeah. So in the last few minutes that we have, because our time together flew, I'd like you to share. I know you, you're, my door is always open to you to come back and flaunt anytime. Tell me, uh, tell everybody how to find you, what, um, what the product is again, the book title again, and uh, you have the free gift. Tell us, you know, everything. Okay, perfect. My website is lauracheadle.com. And the trick there is it's Laura, L-O-R-A, not Laura, but Laura, L-O-R-A, Cheadle.com. And my gift pack is so much fun. It is called the Bundle of Joy gift pack, and you get a free intro to lap dance video. And lap dance is something you do for you to get in touch with your body and the way it feels to flow and move. Second thing you get is a downloadable MP3 hypnosis on creating one positive habit. 
And then the third thing you get is an um, increasing your intuition downloadable PDF that's got steps that you can do every day to tune into what's really going on because we're all intuitive things. You can also find me on Facebook. I've got what's called my flaunt flock because the flamingo is my logo. And in the flaunt flock, we just share our journeys. We just help uplift each other and share what's our going on and our fears and support each other. That's so the jump flaunt forum. Flaunt flock. Flaunt, flaunt flock? Flaunt flock. Okay. You got it. And then, yeah, my book is Flaunt, Drop Your Cover and Reveal Your Smart, Sexy, Spiritual Self. It's on audio, digital, or paperback on Amazon or wherever books are sold. And I would love you to reach out to me. Oh, that's so wonderful. You know, I was just thinking, bundle of joy is what you say when a new baby is born and you are rebirthing women into their authentic selves so how fitting that you offer as the free gift the bundle of joy to yes. encourage women to become their own bundles of joy to give birth to our authentic selves which is the most important thing that we can do from there you know what to do in terms of serving yourself serving society how to eat, how to exercise, how to nurture and, and honor yourself. It's just, this is the core foundation. What you're teaching is so important. Yes. So in the last one minute, as we're saying goodbye, is there just one little sentence you'd like to leave everyone with a tip? I just want to leave with everybody the, the idea of just go within. Whether it's being quiet or walking or dancing, just go within and listen to your own heart. Listen to your own soul. Our inside, our burlesque identity is speaking so loudly. Just listen to yourself and let her out because she's perfect, just as she is. So let out your closet burlesque. burlesque that word! That I <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful knowing you and i just hope that we'll be able to continue our conversation you are lovely i just love everything you're doing thank you thank you so much i've thoroughly enjoyed today me too so everyone i hope i see you online at 1440.tv my finding peace amidst the pandemic workshop this saturday just love yourself, be real, and breathe. See you next time on Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turndorf, Turn On The Love. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.